How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and a bunch of you have been asking for a video on how to use a light meter and today your prayers have been answered because I'm going to show you five different functions I constantly use with my light meter. As a cinematographer, metering is an invaluable asset that will allow you to make decisions both technically and creatively. Being able to precisely quantify light is crucial in streamlining on-site communication and using light to supplement your story. So what exactly is a light meter? You probably have a built-in meter in your camera, but it's calibrated to 18% middle gray, and not everything should appear as 18% gray, which is why I do not recommend using your camera's meter for most situations. I also never recommend eyeballing your exposure from your camera monitors unless they're calibrated. More often than not, uncalibrated monitors will lead to inaccurate results, which is why you should not judge exposure off the monitor. When I first started using a light meter for my projects, I noticed the quality of my work automatically shoot up since everything was measured and fine-tuned exactly the way I wanted. These are stills from my very first project using a light meter way back in film school, and I'm still impressed by how they turned out. There are plenty of videos that cover light meters for photography, but there aren't really any that go really in depth for video. Now the specific meter I'm using is the Siconic L758 Cine, which has been discontinued. It's been replaced by the newer 858 and has all the same features, but has a new touchscreen and a couple additional dandy features, which I won't cover in this video. Metering is an interpretive process. Everyone does it differently and everyone has their own tastes and preferences. Before you watch this video, you should have a basic understanding of how f-stops work. If you don't, here's a quick breakdown. A stop of light is a measure of exposure that either doubles or halves the amount of light. If you add a stop, you double the amount of light. If you take away a stop, you have the light. Stops are usually expressed in f-stops and there is an f-stop scale and it's super important to memorize the scale so that you can quickly gauge how much more or less light you have. The full stops you'll primarily be using are 1, 1 1.4, 2, 2, 8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, 16, 22, and 32. The scale goes on, but these are the core numbers that you should remember. An easy way to remember the scale is to double the number two positions prior in the scale. In essence, you only really need to know F1 and 1.4, and you can use this method to figure out the rest. 1 times 2 is 2, 1.4 times 2 is 2, 8, 2 times 2 is 4, so on and so forth. I can't stress how important it is to memorize the scale. The faster you memorize the scale, the easier it will be to understand and communicate quantities of light. Moving forward, I'll assume you know your f-stops. It will also help if you know how to read a waveform monitor. I won't cover how to read a waveform monitor in this video, but I will include a link in the description to a video I do recommend. Now that we've got that covered, here's the first way I use my light meter. The incident meter is probably the most basic form of metering and is really simple. It measures how much light is falling onto a specific area. Whenever I shoot a scene, I always have a desired f-stop in mind that I want to shoot the scene at. Once that's determined, I'll use my incident meter to measure how much more light or how much less light I need for the scene. The incident meter is great for setting ratios or determining how over or under I want to expose my image. In this scene, I'm using my key to light my subject at a 2.8. I'll simply take the meter and aim the lumosphere towards the light and take a reading. I'll set my fill one stop darker at an f2 so I have a 2 to 1 contrast ratio meaning that my key is twice as bright as my fill. It's also important to note that your f-stop should be chosen first as a creative decision, then use the light meter to achieve exposure. Now there's been a bit of confusion on over and under exposing, so I'll clarify that now. Since I want to shoot this at a 2.8, I want to meter my key for a 2.8. Now since I metered my fill at f2, that means I'll reach proper exposure if I set my aperture to f2, but remember, my aperture is set to a 2.8, which means my fill will be underexposed by one stop because the amount of light required to expose to an f2 is less than the amount of light required to expose at a 2.8. It's also important to note that not everything should be shown at proper exposure. It should be a creative decision. Sometimes I'll purposefully underexpose to help convey night or overexpose because someone is disoriented in the story. Once you understand that it's okay to not always be a proper exposure, it will help free your creativity with lighting. So an f-stop is basically a, uh, it's, it's how we as filmmakers quantify light. So a stop, and relative to one another, a stop of light is either double the amount of light or half the amount of light. So if something is one stop brighter, then that means I have double the amount of light. If it's two times brighter than two times two, it's four times brighter. If it's three, to, if it's if it's three stops higher, what is that? Can anyone tell me? Eight, six, eight. Eight. <laughs> so 
Um, basically, you want to times that number by two. So two times two, four times two, eight. So how much brighter is four steps? Sixteen. Sixteen. Cool. Exactly. There's a lot of them. Sixteen times brighter. And so that's where your lighting ratio comes from. So if I have a two to one ratio, light my key is two times brighter than my fill. If I have a four to one, it is four times brighter than my fill. Um, and so on and so forth. Spot meters measure how much light is reflecting off an object and tries to bring it to middle gray. I use the spot meter all the time to make sure an object in frame lies within the dynamic range of my camera. Before I dive into that, I think it's really important to understand how the spot meter actually works. Middle gray is basically your midpoint in between pure black and absolute white. It's important to note that different cameras and gamma curves place middle gray differently. I'm shooting an S-Log3 which places middle gray at around 41 IRE. At this point, I want to point out a discrepancy between my meter and my camera. If I take a spot meter reading on an 18% gray card, um, it will place its IRE value to around 33 IRE, which is obviously not where middle gray should be for S-Log3. This is probably due to changing gamma curves and modern log profiles. It's always important to find where to expose middle gray depending on which gamma curve you're actually using. You can get around this discrepancy a few different ways. You can either adjust your ISO value until it aligns with the correct middle gray exposure, or you can do what I usually do, which is to use a speed booster with Sony cameras. By using a speed booster, I gain an extra stop of light, which bumps the 18% gray to the correct output, 41 IRE. It's always important to find where to expose middle gray for your specific gamma curve and how your light meter perceives middle gray. In this example, I have a gray card with 90% white, 18% gray, also known as middle gray, deep gray, and black. If I take my spot meter and take a reading on each of these colors, my spot meter will give me the exact f-stop I need to place all of these colors at middle gray. So back to spot metering, imagine you have a window or lampshade in frame. I would use the spot meter to measure how much light is reflecting off of that object and into the camera, making sure that it's staying within the dynamic range of my camera. Since I'm measuring reflectance, it's super important to take a reading from the same angle as the camera since light reflects differently depending on your point of view. Whenever I use the spot meter, I usually use the f-stop I'm shooting at as my reference point. So as you take measurements from brighter objects in the scene, remember that the readings are in relation to your reference f-stop. Since I know that S-Log3 gives me six stops of highlight detail, I know I can expose up to six stops higher than my reference f-stop. Since my aperture is set right now to a 2.8, that means that anything six stops, I'll, my camera's dynamic range will be able to capture anything six stops brighter than that using S-Log3. So um, right now I'm gonna go ahead and take a meter reading of this kind of hot spot right here and see what I get. So I'll go from the camera angle, take a spot meter reading, and I'm getting around 11 and a half. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and count up from a 2.8. So 2.8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, and like a half. So it's almost five full stops, and it's um, just almost, almost six stops. If I started to go six stops, so I'll open up a stop actually, and you can see what that does to the image. I'll open up a stop, and you can see there, the, the highlights are, they're starting to bloom a little bit. They're, that's kind of the breaking point of where I start to lose detail. Basically the spot meter is only refle uh, measuring reflectance. So um, since like grass and stuff like that isn't emitting light, um, that's why you would use spot meter. So you'd use the spot meter on stuff that basically emits light or reflects light. And yeah, since the street doesn't output light um, or the buildings don't output light, that's when I would use the spot meter and measure the reflectance. Exposure compensation is a function I often use when I need to override my meter's measurements. For example, I could be using NDs or purposefully want to overexpose by a specific amount. This is just me telling my meter to offset by a specific amount, seen here in stops. The main way I use this feature is to calculate how much ND I need. In this scene, I'll take a reading of where I want to shoot and start adding stops of exposure compensation, which translates to how many stops of ND I'll need. Once I reach my desired f-stop, I'll add that much ND and I'm ready to shoot. This is particularly helpful when I need to expose for the background. I'm able to find a general location, use my meter, and dial in my exposure without even setting up the camera. 
You can use exposure compensation for a variety of reasons, including calibrating your meter to your camera's perception of middle gray, overexposing one or two stops to push the noise floor back down in post, or compensating for filters. That's one feature I really like using is the exposure compensation. Um, I use it on this meter. This meter is nice because I can just dial it in instead of having to punch in all these different values on the, the newer like digital ones. Um, so this way I can just count, okay, how many, what, what f-stop do I want to shoot at? Um, I'll figure that out and then dial in my compensation and that'll tell me how much ND I need. The meter that I use has two different ISO memories, so you can quickly toggle back and forth between two different ISOs. This is especially helpful when I need to match two different cameras with different native ISOs. When you're trying to match two different cameras, I would start by lighting for the camera with the lower ISO value since it's easier to take away light from the camera with the higher native ISO. If we started lighting to the higher ISO, the other camera will, will appear underexposed and need faster glass to compensate. I'll also note that Siconic decided to remove this feature in the newer 858 meter for whatever reason, which is sort of a bummer. I use this feature a lot whenever I'm working with multiple cameras or different exposure indexes and need to toggle back and forth really quickly. In this demo, we're simulating a two camera interview using an A7R 3 which native ISO is 800 and the FS7 which native ISO is 2000 in S-Log3. Once I've lit to ISO 800, I can toggle between my different ISO values and my meter will tell me what f-stop I should go to. If we take a look at the false color, you'll see that exposure is pretty much matched. So this, guy's, uh, this guy stays at 800 ISO, it's, that's the native. And then this guy is native at 2000. So I just, I just programmed the two different ISOs in ISO 1. ISO 1 is 800, and so right now it's giving me an F4, and then I can push ISO 2 and it's giving me 5, 6, and a third. So I'll set the first one to F4, the second one to 5, 6, and a third. That's cool that you can do that in the meter. Yeah. You can't do it on the newer ones because for whatever reason, they kind of try to, it's a digital interface where it's all touchscreen, but this one, you have buttons where you can actually push and stuff like that. So that's why I like kind of these older meters. The next function I normally use is the Delta EV function. It basically compares any reading to a set reference value and displays the difference in stops. This is really helpful whenever I'm setting my contrast ratios or determining how uniform ambient light is. For those that don't know, a lighting ratio is the comparison of the key light to the fill light. This is expressed as a ratio such as 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 and means that your key is that much brighter than your fill. For example, a ratio of 8 to 1 means that your key is 8 times brighter than your fill. Now remember that stops are expressed in factors of two, doubling and halving. If your key is one stop brighter, it'll be twice as bright. If it's two stops brighter, it'll be four times as bright. If you want to get really technical, you can easily compare brightness levels with this formula. Going back to the meter, the delta EV function will display the difference in stops. This lets you work really quickly since the meter is doing the math for you, rather than you counting the number of stops yourself. To set your reference point, just take a reading and press the Delta EV button and this will store this measurement in its memory. Now whenever I take a reading, it will tell me how many stops over or under it is for my initial measurement. Um, so basically I'm just going to go through some different light ratios and how I would use that with the meter. So if I take a meter reading right here, it's giving me an F2. Um, and if I take a meter, so I can push. Um, this specific button right here, and now whenever I take a reading, it'll tell me how much under or over that is. I know the light's not on, but right now this is telling me it's about three and a half stops under my key. So if I take a meter reading right here on the fill, fill, this is telling me this is four and a half stops uh, darker than my key. So let's bring in the fill or the bounce, and let's give me an even four. So you probably need to go right probably to the edge of the couch there. So you're actually giving me a three five, so a little bit too much, so a little bit half that. You can also, yeah, right around there. So if I take a look right now at the monitor, I know it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> um, right now that's giving me a, um, right now the fill side is four stops darker than my key. So how much darker is four stops? Anybody? 
16. 16. So right now, my fill side, this side is 16 times brighter than my fill. So let's uh, exaggerate that even more. So let's give me an even three. So start coming in. I'll count you down. Three, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right there. A little less. So that's about an even three. So how much darker is three stops? Eight. So right now my fill is eight times darker than, so Danny, if you can just keep that island right into the middle of there. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, right now this is eight times darker. It's getting even two. So this right now is contrast ratios, basically. So um, go ahead and give me an even two. So you're at a three right now. So start coming in. Uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You're probably in right now. Yeah. Let's try that. How's that looking? No, you're not in. So that, yeah, much more different feel. Um, so right now I'm two stops below my key, but uh, which is equals out to about four times darker, even though it looks almost even. Light meters will give you consistent and repeatable results. You can't discern lighting ratios from a waveform or false color just because they don't give you precise measurements of quantity. Do I use the light meter on every shoot? No, that would be totally impractical. I'm not going to interrupt a bride walking down the aisle so I can take an incident reading. Arthur Wu actually has a great video on when it's appropriate to use light meters and the importance of standardizing communication between your crew. I personally prefer my older 758. I'm generally not a fan of touchscreens and love having physical buttons that control operation. It also has dual ISO memories, which the newer 858 doesn't have. You can actually find the 758 on eBay for around two to $300, which is a total steal. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot that you're taking the time to learn about your craft. Even though this channel doesn't currently have a lot of subs, it's great to see more and more of you pop up with each and every video. Plus, I think it's pretty cool being an underground channel. Special thanks to my awesome crew. If it weren't for them, none of this would have been possible. To thank them, I gave them all precisely two seconds to say whatever they wanted on camera. Hi. I'm thankful for being here. Hello. Uh, I woke up late and arrived an hour late this room town. Are you Becky Williams' sister? Welcome to Machado Visuals. <laughs> oh, what up? I really had nothing cool to say, but what's up? Like, comment, subscribe. It's lit. <laughs> <laughs> Insert clever comments here. I've seen a ton of support on the channel over the past couple months, and to say thanks, I want to give away a brand new Siconic 858 to one of you. This isn't a sponsored video, and Siconic didn't send me this. I purchased this meter myself specifically for this video, and I'd love for one of you to take what you've learned here today and apply it to your sets. Be sure to check out the description for all the giveaway details. All you have to do is leave a comment on this video with your biggest takeaway and how you plan on using the 858. If you're looking for some bonus entries, send me a YouTube video explaining what you got out of this and how you plan on using a meter on set. All equipment links are in the description below, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.